thank you first for the invitation to be there. Um, Bordeaux is a great city, the biggest city in France. Yeah, in fact, I live in Bordeaux. Um, I will talk about recurrent events and uh, trying to show you how we can go beyond the Cox model for Poisson process just by using the um, an history, internal history, namely the number of previous failures to try to modelize the intensity of the recurrent events in the, easy, in the easiest manner to do prediction. So the outline of my talk, uh, uh, I will, will present some definitions about the intensity of counting processes and recurrent events and uh, some models uh, which are uh, well used in uh, reliability analysis. I have to say that I'm, I'm not a biostatistician and statistician. I don't have data on cancer, but on uh, um, recurrent events on uh, reliability. But I'm sure we will be clever enough to do the analogy between these two problems. Uh, the main part is uh, to introduce you the um, another model to, to use that. It's a LEP model. Uh, I have to say that the joint work with uh, uh, these, these people, namely uh, <coughs> Lugat, who were at the beginning of this work, and uh, Karim Claudio and Geneva Bukina, who uh, worked about that also. And then I will show to you the applications of uh, data we have uh, and then we continue. Then this is the type of data we have. Uh, this is recurrent event. Namely we have a uh, sample units starting the observation, the observation at time S, another time, handing it uh, another time E. And during this we can observe all we need. That is the time of uh, event, meaning the sampling uh, time also. And uh, finally, we have some uh, number of events per second. Uh, here we want to do some statistical analysis. And, uh, we want to end up the non-independence non of these coherent styles. Uh, in that case, we have more than one unit per individual, that is recurrent events, and we want to understand the uh, dependency between these styles, uh, namely uh, uh, why it may exist some heterogeneity between people uh, by uh, risk factors. Uh, like the covariates observed, and uh, we want to identify the covariates that influences the probability of events at every time, and then uh, to um, predict not only the probability of events, but the number of events we could have in the uh, future period. Also, we do have to um, ask about the something we cannot uh, define as external covariates, namely some phases or some um, dynamic intensities. And with the fact that event occurs, we increase the intensity of the in the future. Uh, my notations for the counting process uh, just a part for one, one uh, unit, and we have some here yeah, a random times of event. It's only the same event with recurrences. And uh, we just count by time the number of events we have. And here it's a zero time. And I don't have some sort of mechanism in this graph. And the stochastic intensity, just uh, a process, a predictable process. Uh, defining with respect to um, history <coughs> that we have on the unit. 
and uh, just the, um, the probability, the probability to get uh, at some point t a jump, knowing all the history before the time t. So my aim is to present you some well-known models of this intensity, and then to show you that you can sometimes do some prediction with it. The story may contain uh, some external coherence, may be independent or not, and uh, the, the path of the counting, counting process itself, uh, obviously the time, the time of, the, of the journey. We don't have to um, make confusion with the rate function. A lot of biostatisticians model the rate function instead of the intensity. And uh, the only difference here is that we just condition, we are just conditioning only with respect to this uh, covariant, but not the in history of the, of the process. And, uh, an example, I can show you a short uh, step. This is, this is the intensity defined here with respect to this uh, number of produce failure, and t minus it's the number of produce failure at time t. If you define a model where the intensity is equal to this formula with z, a random variable, um, beta 0, beta 1, and beta 2 are uh, deterministic part. This is model for the intensity. If you want to compute the rate, that is the um, conditional probability of having a term at time t in a little um, interval, you reproduce the effect of z, but not with the same coefficient. Obviously, uh, n disappears, and the, the <coughs> formula is not the same. Most of the time, maybe this morning or this afternoon, we, um, we heard talks about survival analysis, but not recurrence, recurrence events. Um, if you just want to see the difference between the hazard rate of the lifetime distribution and the intensity of the upcounting process, if you <coughs> assume that the process is recurrent, it just, um, uh, the only difference in, is that when the failure time has occurred in survival analysis, the people is no more at risk. And then the intensity in that case is zero as soon as the jump, the, sorry, the coaching process jumped one time. But we want here to uh, when it has recurrent events, and we remain the unit at risk just by uh, removing this part to define classical intensities uh, like the uh, Cox form. This Poisson process is just a uh, slight here. Yeah. Uh, the easiest way to define in intensity, it could be a Stochastic one, but in that case, conditionally of the color is not, so then it's a deterministic one. And you have some uh, definition given by some ideal. Um, you have a point process, several jump points of the quantum process. Um, it's just a dubious stochastic person process, that is, conditionally of the one and that P, the point from the Poisson process, non homogeneous Poisson process, with this intensity uh, function. In that case, it's not dynamic. dynamic. That is, the intensity does not depend on the past, because we have some independences between the number of the uh, germs in uh, different intervals. Now I can show you some models uh, well uh, known in the, at least in the reliability analysis. Uh, 
what we want to what we want to put in the model is either the n that is the number of previous failures or maybe the times themselves, time of jump sensor. Obviously we want to use some uh, cox like a part uh, in, in these uh, definitions. Uh, maybe if you want to complicate this model, defining a frailty uh, heterogeneity. In this talk, an event will be uh, a failure. We talk about a failure of an event, uh, a failure of one um, mechanical part, associated with a maintenance section, meaning that this unit is continuing to be in a good state enough to, to, to have good functioning state. That is, when we have a failure, we do instantaneous repair and then do the other. And in that case, what we want to do is to explain the effect of these maintenance sections on the dynamic part of the intensity. So the easiest way is to define a deterministic uh, model, meaning that this intensity is just baseline, lambda zero, and with a, a multiplicative part like a flux, uh, flux slide. But here's a Z to provide many fixed or time dependent, but not internal. So it does not depend on N itself. In the global analysis, lambda zero is usually increasing this aging phenomenon. And we want to um, interpret the coefficient of z in the propensity to, to have different intensity with respect to this heterogeneity of the of the units. And I can call this uh, the Poisson process because uh, the time uh, is it, it, it's an example of the of the parts when you have a given uh, values for <coughs> values for the covariate, uh, so h is uh, lambda zero here, and they have deterministic function. And the only thing is whatever wherever these the times are, this intensity down doesn't change. You don't have modification modification of this intensity whether you have a jump or not of this, uh, of this counting process. Some thing you may have is that when you have different values of this component, you have different values of this intensity. That means that when you have a point of a failure and then a maintenance section, the intensity is continuing to, to go, and then the maintenance is quite bad because it does not recover the intensity to zero, for instance. That's uh, the case of um, intensity defined for a perfect repairs, meaning that you start from a baseline function and you define the intensity only in this manner when at every time t, the values of the intensity depend only on the time since the last event. In dashed line here is the lambda zero times these covariates. And at the first time you have an event, then the intensity uh, goes to zero and then continuing like the, the behavior of lambda zero. It, um, it reveals some uh, perfect paper. And then, if you, can, if you want to analyze the uh, duration between times, between this event time, you just have, uh, if you fix uh, Z, you just have IID uh, random times, and then it's a renewable process. That means you have a unit functioning until it fails. And then, either we say that you do a perfect maintenance or you change 
you change the list by the new one, and then went to the to the next uh, the next jump. The intensity behaves like that. Um, little more complicated process, you know, uh, generalized removal process, where the effect of the maintenance, the effect of the uh, of this um, decreasing is uh, not enough to be to, to put the intensity to zero. And you have a coefficient there rho that is uh, the effect of the maintenance, the way the intensity decreases but not goes to zero. You have two uh, a lot of models like that, uh, called virtual age models, but most of them can um, be written with respect to the arithmetic prediction of intensity or arithmetic prediction of age because here you do the same thing, you reduce the age and then calculate the number of the, the function at this time. We can say that this is a dynamic dynamic definition of this intensity because this stochastic um, path really depends on what happens to this uh, to this unit. And finally, I show you the last one, the left left uh, one there. No more simple or complicated, just another another way to handle this uh, the dynamic part of the intensity, meaning that this intensity is a has three parts. First a cox like part uh, with a external coverage. This line lambda zero uh, that does not depend on the history. And just this part lock is part with uh, the the counting process. If you put lambda to zero, you recover the uh, deterministic uh, definition, and then you recover a, a Poisson process with uh, this covariance. If you take lambda positive, uh, it was our case, uh, every time you have a jump, the lambda jump to a given value. That means that when you do recur, okay, the unit is still functioning, but the intensity is greater than before. That means that your maintenance is worse than before. That's the only things you can do, just recur with a very, very bad manner, and then uh, you're certainly adding this Duration between times which will be a quick term. Why doing these models? Because engineers want to analyze and interpret the uh, effect of the maintenance first. And then they want to predict <coughs> the, the future number of events according to a quite simple model with structural distribution. And we have that under a parameterized value of the baseline. And you can show uh, really uh, funny results of these uh, this models. I can say that this model is uh, uh, a sub-model of the Peña Lander model, where we have all the, the the part we can find, the freighty values coming from the previous number of failure, the baseline counting to something that cannot be the calendar time of a scale transformation, and then the top slide part. It's a very general model. So I reduce to the late model to show you some. Uh, Results, uh, namely uh, the main main one is uh, when you have this this frame of observation, you are only able to observe the number of failures between two 
uh, two times. Maybe some something occurred before, but you, you don't know you don't know that. And you want to do some prediction. You want to predict the number of failure occurred between B and C. And B maybe can be um, later than the you can have A B and C and D to predict the number of failure between C and D if you want. The fact is we have the marginal distribution. That is we we can compute the distribution of the n of t uh, that is a negative binomial distribution with parameter depending on alpha and capital lambda zero, which is computed here. <coughs> we have, of course, the cumulative, the mean cumulative number of the zero-parameter distribution. That is the margin. If you want to, to do some conditional expectation, you can do that also. If you want to compute the distribution of the number of failures you will have here, knowing the number of here, you will gain a negative distribution. And then it's very easiest, easy to, to, to do some prediction with the parameter, of course. <coughs> this one is not only useful to do prediction, but also to do some statistical estimation with truncated data. Usually, when you do some uh, parametric modeling and maximum likelihood estimation uh, of parameter with recurrent events, you have defined a, a formula for the intensity. <coughs> you assume you observe the unit on zero t, then you have some types of terms. Like FAO, it's just written like that, and you just have to optimize this one. We will do something like that, but uh, under this, um, these assumptions, the parametric assumptions of the lambda, this is the statistic intensity, a, gi a given sample of uh, units observed at some different times in the calendar times. And then we can, let me call the graph to show you that we may have some unknown number of, because the intensity depends on n of t. But if you cannot, if you are not able, are not able to observe the path at the beginning, even between s and e, you cannot define the value of n because you are not sure that there were there is there are jumps before the, the window of observation. Fortunately the likelihood may be simplified and after some calculation we get the formula <coughs> just to show you where the parameter parameters appear, just here and there, and uh, it's not so difficult to use the estimations. And then, mm -hmm. let me show you the application of uh, what are net networks. Data sets come from uh, Paris, what is a nice city, but Paris also. Uh, we have some data from the public drinking water service. The data were uh, the sample were certified, and we just analyze the great past iron pipes. This is even nickel for the pipes because we are sure that uh, plastic and nickels don't know, uh, don't behave in the same manner for, for this kind of um, modeling. Uh, a lot of pipes, a lot of. Um, network, very large network. Um, some window of observation uh, of, of 11 years uh, long. Most of um, pipes were installed before the beginning of the observation, of course. 
some of them were uh, not in the sample at the end of the, of the, of the observation, mainly because of um, decision which is not re relative to the number of failures. They decide to change the parts because they change the road and want to make some preventive maintenance on them using the fact that the, the road is changed and then change the pipes below. Few, few units uh, had at least one failure, a lot of sounds went. And a very few failures, uh, units had more than one failure. What about the covariates? The covariates are uh, mainly time dependent. And we can observe here the number of uh, events per um, month during this period. Obviously, you can see that in winter, you have a lot of much more uh, events than in the, uh, in the summer just due to the fact that the frost and the cold days uh, are a risk factor for the, for the bikes. So we can use some kind of covariates which are time dependent, namely uh, the temperature itself or even the number of Frost days per uh, period of 10 days. Count number with frost every 10 days and so on to, to distinguish between the summer and the winter. Engineers don't know if the good um, variable is the temperature itself or uh, the threshold of the temperature or the number of frost days, and we try some, some of them. Of course, the length of the pipes uh, it also influences the intensities of, um, of failure of these pipes. And then we have two or three uh, covariates. With this model, uh, the effect of the previous uh, number of failure, the baseline, which are an aging power function of time, and repeated it by a uh, coefficient uh, cox coefficient. Here are the parameters uh, with two choices. One, we, when we don't use the time varying covariate with of x2, and one model where the time covariate was present. The fact is that we can show here that the uh, alpha is not um, as a significant value. That means that the maintenance section is really uh, um, worse than all action. It's not a good repair of the pipes when they, when they have failures. To do prediction, the, the way we can do it is just to use the parameters and estimated parameters and plug for which units, knowing its history, its age, its length of pipes its number of previous failure to predict the number of failure in the, uh, in the future by period. If you do that by year, it's not a validation. We just use the same sample to compute this prediction and to estimate the parameter. You can uh, observe that uh, without time fit, without time covariate, it's a black curve, obviously, uh, may be linear, and due to the aging, aging of the system, because the pipes are more and more uh, old, and when you do some uh, time-dependent covariate, you can see that with respect to the choice of the covariate, you have some different uh, predictions, which are, which are uh, quite, uh, quite good. Uh, yeah. At the point, we will use the negative binomial to estimate the mean number of failure or the probability of one 
one, two, three, or zero failure. Or if you want to use by another, uh, another type of prediction, you have to uh, do some preventive policies. You just can rank the pipes from the higher risk to the lower to help engineers to define the, the pipes they can change before they uh, their failures. And uh, excuse me, yes, this is very um, efficient to define a preventive maintenance policy. A lot of them use uh, the lift curve to, to present this, uh, this results. Okay, the conclusion? One minute. This page. Yeah. Many models exist to handle some dynamic part of the intensity. Um, I can show only one here when we have some explicit distribution for, the, for predict the number of failures we can have. Uh, so we parameter framework has not been investigated yet. It's on your progress. And uh, I'm sure that you can find uh, bridges or analogies between the example I'll show you and the uh, uh, recurrent event in the cancer or something, something else. Um, and finally, uh, we have just had to discuss the dynamic versus the freight the point of view for this intensity because we have found a binomial, uh, negative binomial for the marginal, and you can say that if you take a, post, a poisson intensity, a classical one, with just a freight before, which will uh, is a, a gamma distribution, it's the same margin. It's also a negative binomial. <laughs> so with the data, actually, we don't have some testing procedure or heuristic procedure to to see if the intensity is really time dynamic or um, it heterogeneous with respect to the T at the beginning of the life of the units. That's all. Thank you.